All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. Look who I'm with me, Rohit, uh, founder and CEO of Axel Data. I'm here at Axel Data office in Campbell. First of all, thank you for hosting me here, uh, Rohit. It is such a pleasure to be here. I had amazing lunch with the team as well. So thanks for that. But uh, today I'm here to you know discuss many things about not only just about Axel Data, but about your story, about data observability as a space and uh, much more. Uh, but why not just start with your introduction for our audience? Well, Ravit, I'm so glad you enjoyed lunch and, you know, welcome yeah. to our office. I'm hoping to host you many more times. Thank you. Uh, well, the, uh, the founding story is very simple. You know, I was an application engineer for about 10 years before I turned into a data engineer. Mm. And I figured out that the application engineering tooling had moved way ahead of where data engineering tooling was. And what I found out was the critical difference that, you know, when you were an application engineer, right you had tools at your disposal to solve production issues and get going. But if you were a data engineer, you did not have any tools at your disposal to figure out what was going wrong. Mm. And we identified that opportunity when I was at Hortonworks, and we figured out that it is going to be a multi-cloud, multi-technology world where data was going to grow exponentially, uh, system complexity was going to go up exponentially, and there was not enough supply of you know, highly qualified data engineers. And we felt that this was a huge opportunity for us to build the next version of the data dogs of the world. Mm. And that's why we started the company. Okay, this is pretty interesting. So how difficult was it? Like, I know starting a company also comes with a lot of challenges. What were those early challenges that you kind of felt even, you know, obviously you found a big gap, but then now you want to make that first move and you have like a set of challenges. How did you, what were those challenges and how did you overcome those challenges? Oh, the number of challenges that you face as an entrepreneur, you know, yeah. they never finish. You yourself are an entrepreneur and you know how hard it is. 100%. You need to focus on a few things, you know, uh, but if I were to sort of summarize on the number of things that can go wrong and you have to do right, I think the most important thing is to identify the need in the market Mm. And to try to become that indispensable product mm -hmm. that, you know, teams and especially in our case, enterprises would love and will need not just for six months, but, you know, for many, many years. And the amount of effort that you can put into researching the area that you want to spend, let's say, 10, 20 years of your life fixing and solving for, you need to be sure that it's a big space. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, you know, the most amount of work that we did. Once you've figured out the problem space, then, you know, the second problem is do you have the right people on the bus? Mm, and right. you know Jim Collins good to great it's like a perfect exercise of that you know get the right people on the bus and go from there right. and we did that we got the right team obviously the third component is capital and I think we were very lucky that we've had some of the best investors in the world you know invest in accelerator you know across all these rounds yeah okay and the, no I think 100% these these are you know challenges but at the same time you had the right people right people to support uh, for the capital as well. So it makes a lot of sense. In yeah. terms of, you know, uh, I was at Gartner just a few weeks back. I mm -hmm. spoke to Ramon as well there and uh, great insights from him too. Uh, but I've been listening a lot around, you know, the data governance, the AI governance, uh, which is very important in the AI space, but even in the data space. And I wanted to ask you a little about, uh, you know, what difference do you see in the traditional data governance uh, versus data observability? Uh, do you have any thoughts around that? Uh, would you like to share with us? Yeah, I think one of the biggest differences that we've seen, at least in the last 10 years, is that you know data governance and data operations, they're actually coming together. Mm. And the reason that it is coming together is because you know if you think traditional data governance was aimed at you know making self-serve data analytics more effective. Right. And everything that you did in the world of governance was very, very aligned to making sure that end user analytics was delivered at a certain speed with certain security and certain guardrails in place. Over a period of time, as you know, more data has accumulated in the enterprise, you found that you know, the problems don't occur at the level of consumption. Mm. Because by the time that it has reached the consumption layer, the problems have already marinated for many, many months in some cases. Mm. And so what you need is actually preventive and detective controls in your data engineering space. Mm. And what we have figured out is that data observability is the glue that actually ties the two aspects of you know, platform and data engineering mm. and data governance. So the way that this whole scenario is going to play out is that you know, data management is in for a displacement. Mm. And you know, data observability is going to be the primary force for managing large-scale, 
hybrid multi cloud data enterprise landscape okay this is pretty interesting do you uh, also have any use case that you would like to share in this regard like anything that you might have seen recently or in the past as well yeah i mean one of the use cases that i often talk about is you know we work with large data providers mm mm-hmm. extremely large ones you know some yeah, of yeah. those are publicly available on our website um you can take a look at that um the way that they were solving their data problems was they were trying to use traditional data quality tools mm. and the problem was that they were finishing their data quality checks in 30 days and that is not acceptable in the world of real time mm. and the problems that arise out of that is that you know your data engineering suffers you know your best engineers are focused on just solving the data quality problems right and you're out of compliance often times mm. and so what you need is something that gives you visibility into your data pipelines in real time and that is where data observability just comes into play at this point in time pretty much all the large data providers are actually looking at our solution or are working with us already mm. and they're trying to you know improve their compliance reduce their customer churn making sure highly qualified and trustworthy data is available to their customers. Mm. Okay, this is pretty interesting. Thanks for sharing that. One more thing that I wanted to, you know, ask is like I was at Gartner, Gartner and there was, you know, obviously all the enterprise leaders kind of also wanting to learn more about AI, like Gen AI. Mm-hmm. Gen AI has been the talk of the town. Uh but there have been companies and I've heard it from Ramon as well mm-hmm. around AI, the capabilities that you guys have added. What do you think about this space? How do you see the intersection for AI and data observability? Just just wanted to get your thoughts as well. I think you know this is the most interesting turn in my professional career. I was not here when the internet was designed and I was not here when cloud. I was actually there when the cloud came up and I know what kind of shift it had and what yeah. kind of effects it's had. I think you know AI is at a very similar moment. And so we have a two part strategy, you know, we have AI for Axel data. and we we made an acquisition last year of a company called Bugle with amazing founders and yeah. an excellent team and we've launched all the ai capabilities and the way that data management is going to change because of the inclusion of ai in our own products is that it's going to make data management almost zero touch and we are going to make that happen in the wow. next you know few quarters and there's like a lot of innovation in the pipeline which we'll keep talking to you yes, and many sure. others about The second part is that you know what does AI actually or what does Excel data do for AI and and you know before we go to that I think we need to take a pause and think about you know what effect will AI have on the whole structured data space. I think you know just like consumer behaviors followed in enterprise mm. consumer expectations of conversational interfaces will also translate into business users looking for similar interfaces right. similar demands for real time highly accurate data. you will not be able if you're a traditional enterprise you will not be able to get in control of ai if you haven't gotten in control of your data pipelines which mm. are feeding your ai systems mm. and so we almost become like the operational precursor before you can send the kids for a marathon so i think there'll be large scale adoption of data observability especially that ai is going to work on larger and much larger data sets in the next 2 years than it is today mm. as more data gets generated Wow, this is very insightful. Thanks for sharing that, Rohit. Uh, one more question in terms of you know, I know your approach has always been the most simplistic but most impactful as well in the data observability space. Uh, what is your current approach? Like, is it um, like I know like you you are out there always simplistic but aggressive and impactful. So, what's your approach right now for the market? Well I think you know uh, we've got to basically uh, take a step back and and look at what the enterprise is really looking for and we've already yes. always done that. We do that every two quarters we mm-hmm. actually go back to the drawing board and see whether we, the things that we are doing is producing the desired effect or not. We did a similar session about 18 months back you know internally in the company and with some of our board members it was a very interesting session we figured out that the real strength and the real value that we can bring to the enterprise is the congregation or an aggregation of all the metadata that exists in the enterprise which is all the sequels that were written who were the users who wrote those sequels you know what right. was the cost what is the performance mm-hmm. what is the quality of pipeline what's the quality of service that users are experiencing and now we have the entire context mm. of you know how data is being operated within the enterprise and when you start bringing that context out what does it do it does a few interesting things it tells you you know what is the quality of your data right. what's the reliability of your operations what's the spend and performance 
what's your privacy and security posture you know there are so many many you know so many interesting avenues mm. that traditional enterprises have been struggling with that you can just overnight solve so from a product standpoint that is our approach you know in terms of you know the rest of the gtm we are obviously very direct you know we go go to the market directly to selling into large fortune 500 and global 2000 companies but we also do a lot of good partnership work especially mm. with you know the csps and isps including all the major cloud players including some of the largest you know isps that you also work with i love it and uh, thanks for sharing that and that's one of the you know approaches that i've like i've known axel data for more than 4 years i guess mm-hmm. uh, and uh, at least i've followed the journey pretty well and uh, seen the growth so uh, it's always such a pleasure to you know catch up with uh, folks at axel data and uh, now yourself as well rohit so thanks for that one last question for our audience is if they want to reach out to you which is the best place where can they reach out where can they learn more about axel data i know a lot of resources that you all kind of put on the website too so so you know if you want to hear my thoughts on twitter you know my handle is rc online i am rc online also on linkedin i am okay. very active on linkedin you know axel data also posts some great uh, you know content in terms of education both right. on on ai on llms and on data observability in general wow. so we are just you know available all the time and just feel free to ping me and you know have a chat anytime that you want to talk fantastic this was great right thanks for doing it and uh, thank you everyone for watching us today uh, and stay tuned for more of the data and ai content that we are creating thank right. you thanks rohit thank you